The rumors of React Court's demise have been greatly uh, exaggerated. It just got killed temporarily while I um, underwent a month of infectious disease sickness. That was not great. And my voice was a little bit, you know, under the effect of it. But then look at this. Here we are. We're back. And we're reacting to... You know what we should be reacting to? Hold on. Get this trash out of here. I mean, I don't know. This post might actually be goaded. But we got to go to top posts of the month. There's no reason for us to be doing the, the current posts in the hot filter. Give me all the bangers that we missed over the course of the preceding 30 days. That's the ticket. Oh, man. <laughs> I love seeing all this red asshole flare. This is my favorite song. <clears throat> this thread has been locked. Okay, here you go. Am I the asshole for thinking that a friend with a miserable living situation would want to house sit my beautiful home without being paid? Yes. You don't even need to go through. Hey, but like, I'm not even like this guy. You know, this is not Hassan's stream. I am not a person that's like, you know, if you ever say what's up to me and I answer, you owe me money for the emotional labor that I put in, okay? But if you're asking someone to do a job for you and you don't want to pay them because their life sucks, that actually makes you like a double asshole. Like, I haven't even read, like, what's the, what the body of the post is, but it's a bad start. Am I the asshole for thinking that a friend with a miserable living situation would want to house sit my beautiful home without being paid? I live in and run a beautiful bed and breakfast. It's a beautifully restored colonial on 25 acres with mountain views. Nobody knows what the fuck that means, right? It's not just me. I'm in my early to mid-30s. I have a house. When people say... It's a colonial. I don't know what that means. It's from the era of the colonies. Sometimes you'll be in someone's house and they'll be like, it was built in 1890. And I'm like, all I go is, oh, wow. Because I'm like, that's old. But I don't know what that means. Like, is that, were they building better houses in the 1890s? Were they building worse houses? I don't understand anyway. It's got mountain views, fireplaces, cloth. Yeah, okay, like they, I don't, if you're asking someone to house sit for you, I'm, I, I can't believe I'm stun locked by like the first sentence, basically. You're asking someone to house sit for you, you think they're gonna be like, oh, you gotta pay me a hundred bucks a day. And then they're like, well, it's got clawfoot tubs. Oh, in that case, I should be paying you a hundred bucks a day to take a bath in something that, isn't built into the wall, but instead has like some brass feet that you can't even see when you're in the bathtub. I wake up feeling very lucky every day. Big time, big time, big time, bat chest. Our family lives in the back of the house and the front is rented to well-to-do strangers from Boston and NYC. People pay me quite a bit of money to come stay at my house. Rad. Oh my God. What a dickhead. Just the way that you're writing this is like, it's just annoying, right? It's like, if your house is cool, you don't need to tell me how cool it is and how awesome your life is. Also, if you're renting it to well-to-do travelers from Boston and NYC, you should be able to pay a house sitter IMO. But our family is planning two weeks away this spring. We've shut down the B&B &B for that time period. I have a friend who is involuntarily living with her mom and brother while she looks for a new job and apartment. She's in a tough situation and generally hates it. I asked her if she'd like the house sit for us. She could set up for a few weeks in our fanciest guest room. She'd have the whole place to herself, and the only responsibility would be to feed the dog twice a day. It's literally, do you ever see The Shining? You're asking her to Jack Torrance. She was offended to learn that I wasn't offering to pay her. She can stay in a $250 a night room for free for two or three weeks. I assume she'd be delighted just to have a place to stay. When I was jobless in my 20s, I would have been over the moon if a similar opportunity had presented itself to me. Would you? Like, I just feel like when I was in my mid-20s, someone being like, hey, for free, you could stay in an unnecessarily large abandoned bed and breakfast in 25 acres of wilderness, I would be like, that's okay. I think I'm going to stay in the city where my friends are. 
What do you think? Like, I mean, I guess if you love hiking or like sleeping in a different bed every single night, there's there's some merit to that. But like, I don't know. It just seems like this person is out of their minds. Also, like, who wants to stay in a hotel in your own city for fun? Like, I like staying in a hotel, but if I would never get, like, a hotel room, I think, in Vancouver, because I think I would be there, and I would be like, I wish I was at home. I wish I had a big fridge instead of a little fridge. I wish I had, you know, two bathrooms instead of one bathroom. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> I'm going too far. Yeah, plus it's not even going to have amenities. There's no room service. I'm a little surprised, honestly. Maybe it's because I've been away from React Court for a little while. I've probably moved a little bit further on the political compass to align myself with Twitch chat. I'm a little surprised that the judgment is 48% yes, 38% no. I would have thought it would be much more yes. I'm a little surprised, but let's, let's dig into the comments here. I mean, I think it's definitely yes. You're asking someone, well, I don't know, it's, I guess it's not, look, okay, let's go look at the edit for one second. You look at the edit, it's like, because they're not actually doing anything, normally we do not get house sitters, nor do we need one, we usually just find a spot for our dog and shut the place down. Okay, like, it doesn't make you an asshole for basically being like, hey, do you want to stay in our place for, for a couple of weeks if you feed our dog? But then be, that being said, you basically are asking them to do something because you're asking them to feed the dog. If they don't house it, you're, you're going to have to pay a kennel or give the dog to a family member for three weeks. So, you know, I mean, when we go away for like four days, one of Kate's friends comes and cat sits the cats. You don't have to do anything. You literally just walk in for five minutes, scoop the litter box and feed them. And we still pay them. You know, they are always like, it's literally no work, don't pay us. And I'm like, no, it's literally some work, we're going to pay you. And it's like, it's a delicate dance. But I just don't understand. I mean, if look, here's the thing. If we got a King Solomon this as well, I think you shouldn't have to pay your friend in this situation, but you then have to house sit their house for free for an equivalent length of time. You don't, if you're not going to pay, then we go back to an equivalent exchange of bartering. And something tells me that this person is so in love with their house, they want to have intercourse with the air intakes. They probably don't want to ever leave their house, except for those two weeks they're going on vacation, even though being inside of their bed and breakfast is a vacation in and of itself, especially if you're a well-to-do traveler from New York or Boston. This, it already pisses me off, too. Just because, like, how do you know all of, your, all of your guests are from New York or Boston? You don't know that. You never have somebody come from Oswego. You never have somebody come from Albany. You never have somebody come from Massapequa. It's only, only the most uh, elite urbanites from the two major coastal cities in the Northeast. Shit pisses me off, man. Anyway, sorry. I'm inclined to think that maybe they're not that big of an asshole for the ask. They're a little bit of an asshole for the way that they are so in love with their own house that they think someone else would want to stay in it for free. <clears throat> Hold on, I've accidentally clicked off. <laughs> Hope I don't click off. This is my first time doing React Chord in a while. I apologize, okay? I'm not, my muscle memory's all gone. As you pointed out, she's jobless. You need a house sitter. If you really wanted to help, you could treat her like a human and offer her the job instead of a charity case. She should be grateful. She, she can do you a favor by watching your house and taking care of your animal. This is not how you treat your friends. Use that quite a bit of money you pay her, you make and pay her for her labor. You're the asshole. It's not even, you don't even have to type based. That's just like the truth. That's the same reading of the situation. OP updated that she doesn't need a house sitter as they usually board the dog or leave it with family. Okay, then don't get a house sitter then. 
Just because you could do something for free doesn't mean that somebody else that you want to do it for you has to do it for free. That's insanity. It sounds more like OP's doing her a favor. I must be a little bit askew versus the people in this post because staying in an empty hotel in the woods does not seem like... Like, sure, it's a $200, $250 a night room, but, like, not just because of the room. Nobody is going to, like, this hotel and being like, oh, this square space is worth $250 a night. You got the front desk you got the concierge maybe you got if it's a bed and breakfast they're providing you with the opportunity to also purchase some food you know it's it, there's amenities it, I, I, apart from the claw bathtubs 25 acres to yourself you don't need 25 you need like one acre to yourself you can't use all 25 acres simultaneous maybe again this is like city living has has given me this biased opinion like, you need 25 acres? Just shut up. What, you're using, like, one-third of one acre simultaneously. Big whoop. I just like knowing that there's 22 other acres out there that nobody else can use, even though I'm not using it. <laughs> All right, Malf would use it. But you're not planting a garden on this colonial. Come on. House sitting is free unless there's a lot of work involved. Where do you live that house sitting is usually free? I'm in New Zealand and have never heard of anyone being paid to house sit, even when there's pets to be cared for. I Look, I think that that could be true, but again, it's based on an equivalent exchange. It's like a, instead of bringing the market economy into the situation, now you're in La Cosa Nostra. If somebody house sits for you for free, you owe them a favor. So if you would rather be asked later to help them move for two days for free then that's fine. Otherwise, you know, maybe you could work something out financially because that's what the paper's there for in the first place. You're the asshole. To be honest, my parents do this to me all the time. Try to offer me up the house sit for them or their friends with for free with a their house is so nice you can just stay there while well, a mansion is nicer than my apartment and still work for me to live my life somewhere that isn't my home and do even a minor amount of chores. It also makes me feel like they're looking down on my living situation as less than when it's really just comfortable to try and live somewhere that isn't your home. I think I read that sentence very wrong. People talk, people talk. Sure, she could have done it for free. It's not a ton of chores. She's not wrong for asking to be paid. You're assuming an empty house is worth it to her. So true, so true. You're the asshole. You're the asshole. Here we go. Finally, someone that I, I agree with. Looking at this from your friend's perspective, how much will this benefit them? 25, 25 acres is big enough to not be in town. Does she have a car to go look for jobs and apartments while watching your B&B? There's gas money. She could lose two to three weeks of getting her life together. Also, what is your friend going to do once everyone gets back from vacation? She could be screwed with no place to go. I thought they were going to take it in a different direction and be like, you know, she's just going to be alone in the Overlook Hotel. But I don't know. It's just kind of a weird energy to be like, you know, hey, my house is nicer than your house. Do you want to watch it for free? Just, I mean, at least throw them a pittance or something. Yeah, at least, like, stock the, the commissary or something like that. <clears throat> Am I the asshole filtered this month? Am I the asshole for dropping my son? This is a spicy one, man. Am I the asshole for dropping my son off at his dad's during his custody time, even though he was scheduled to fly out on that day? Well, this should be inoffensive. Our custody agreement is that our ex has our son for overnights, two weekends a month. He never sticks to it, though, and usually asks to see him whenever it suits him. I was supposed to drop him off Friday evening, but the night before at 2 a.m., he texted me to let me know he had a flight to catch late Friday, so I would have to keep our son. I was pissed because this isn't the first time he's done this, and this was one of the biggest issues we had with our marriage, him leaving on short notice constantly and just expecting me to deal with it. 
I ended up taking my son to him and ignoring the message. When we got there, he tried to get me to take him home with me and called me childish and petty when I refused. He ended up taking our son with him, but he's been sending me angry texts the entire time since apparently our son has been making it hard for him to get any work done. <laughs> well, you know, it's kind of what you sign up for. Am I the asshole? I'm going to add this here because people keep telling me to go to the courts to try and get full custody. I've tried. My ex ended up getting even more time and refused to give me full custody. Also, my son is enjoying his time with his dad. Despite everything, my ex isn't the type to take out his anger on our son or make him feel like he isn't wanted when he has him. Um, I'm, look, I'm not used to these being so short. It kind of feels like an everybody sucks here. With I will say, like, definitely, it sounds like the dad was being a dickhead at late notice being like, you know, don't bring our kid tomorrow because I have a flight. That's like a jerk move. Um, the mom, on the other hand, I don't think she necessarily did much wrong. And I guess if she's confident that when she sends the kid to her dad, even if the dad is upset, he's going to be a good parent then that's not so bad. But I can't help but feel that if the dad kind of sucks, maybe, uh, it w and uh, this is like, maybe I'm not in a position to explain this, but like, maybe it's better to just keep the kid and, uh, you know, give them the best weekend that you possibly could, even if it's frustrating, rather than, I don't know, run, not run the risk of like alienating the father, but on the other hand, run the risk of like compromising the enjoyment of their child. But then, I don't know, like I'm getting legal advice from Twitch chat, but then they were like, if it's a court order, they have to obey it. Okay, well, in that case, not the asshole. Is the son three or 15? Probably, I, my guess would be younger. Because I feel like if you have a 15-year-old child, they're going to let you get as much work done as you want to get done. Because they're going to be in their room on their dang iPads, watching their TikToks, filming TikTok uh, water bottle challenges with the uh, ring light. You know how kids are these days. So true, so true. <laughs> I don't even want to read the comments for this one. This is just like... This is too complicated. This is a toxic situation. That's not fun. Get me out of here. What do you think this is? A Judd Apatow movie? Am I the asshole for not inviting my adoptive parents to my wedding? Now we're talking. Now we're talking. <laughs> Much better. I love the wedding. Am I the assholes, man? I30F am getting married to my fiance in May. I was adopted when I was a baby and my adoptive parents did their best to raise me and support me through college. We always had a good relationship and I obviously love them. Let me stop you right there. I would advise you to invite your adoptive parents to your wedding. The first two sentences here essentially tell you the way that the story should go probably. Unless there's a huge but at the end of this that's like they recently went insane. When I was 23, I decided to search for my biological parents. And long story short, they were teenagers when they had me. They are still together and have two more children. They said they wanted to keep me, but they couldn't raise me, so they decided to put me up for adoption. The thing that really hurt me was that in my childhood and teenage years, they tried to contact my adoptive parents and have a relationship with me, but my adoptive parents refused. Okay? It's a complicated experience that I... Or a complicated situation I have no experience with. Let's move on. And then keep that context for the future. <clears throat> When I confronted my adoptive parents, they said they were afraid I might prefer my biological parents, so they tried to keep them away. I was hurt and disappointed and decided to go low contact. Over the years, we built a better relationship, but it's not like before. So for my wedding, I decided to ask my biological father to walk me down the aisle. He obviously said yes. When my adoptive parents learned, they were hurt and said their worst fear had come to reality. And if I insist on putting my biological parents before them, I shouldn't invite them to the wedding. Well, this, I'm so surprised. This is actually a justifiable but. I did not think that they could craft a moment where uh, they seemed a little bit more justifiable. 
My answer was that they are not invited then. Since then, all my adoptive family are calling an asshole. So am I the asshole? Minor update. I talked to them and suggested both dads could walk me down the aisle. My adoptive parents refused because they said that they did all the hard work. This is a real King Solomon situation. King Solomon suggested we split the aisle in half and the adoptive parents said no. But wait, in this case, this means the adoptive parents were the real MVPs all along. <laughs> Maybe the metaphor doesn't hold. Um, I mean, I personally, it's a very delicate situation without a doubt. But I think it's a kind of like an everybody... Kind of, maybe not the asshole? It's tough. Hold on, I hear my baby crying. It's like a brain short-circuiter. You can't, you can't have any kind of like coherent stream of consciousness when you hear your own child cry. It's like biologically, it just overrides all of the other stuff going on in your brain. I will say, I, I've got a very funny story. I can't believe I haven't told it yet. When I picked her up from daycare yesterday, she had uh, uh, like a biscuit, like a, a digestive cracker slash cookie that had been giving, uh, given to her by her daycare provider. So we took her home with the biscuit and uh, she was like, check it out, like, cookie cookie and then she couldn't really eat it but she would like put it in her mouth and go nom 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 like pretend to eat it hello yeah. um and you know she was walking around with it it was so cute and then she was starting to climb up the stairs we we're watching her to make sure she doesn't fall you know we got the the hands ready to catch her in case she slips but while she was climbing up the stairs she must have like put too much pressure on the biscuit hand and then it snapped in two and she just immediately, she like sat down on her butt and just tears poured down her face. And it was like, it's such a complicated cocktail of emotions because I was like sad because my child was going through like the most emotional thing they've gone through in weeks. Like they, there was genuine emotional pain. She was upset. But it was also really funny because I was like, it's a... It's a digestive biscuit. Like it's, you could literally still eat it. It doesn't even, like it's just such a minor thing to go nuts for. It was like, I was the saddest I've been in forever. And I was also like, this is the funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Hello. She's eating a, eating a biscuit. She's eating a biscuit right now. She had a very good time in the kinder gym. Oh, let's go. All the, all the original members were there. Whoa, so we were the only ones who washed out. Yeah. And then they had like a panda on the wall. Oh, yeah. And then she kept like leaving the class to see the panda on the wall. <laughs> and then one of the instructor was like, oh, why is Whoa. she here? And then uh, I was like, she, she really likes the panda. Mm. So instead of participating <laughs> in the class, we're just like, Panda, panda, the whole time. Oh, that's cute though. She's she's showing off her big brain. Mama. Mama. More more. She's doing more more. More more. A little sign language for you. More more. More more. More more Twitch sub. More more. No no no, that's okay. <laughs> Cracker. Okay. Bye bye. bye, -bye. <laughs> it did sound like she said caca. <laughs> I I can still hear it. Okay, bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye, Tomo. Tomo, come here. Oh my god. Tomo, you gotta get your tail out of the door, man. That's why I was calling it a biscuit. Anyway. Alright, back to the lecture at hand. Let me hydrate for a moment. Um, I look. I the the more I've simmered on this, I kind of feel like, at a glance, it seems like you should treat your adoptive parents with more respect. I'm not even really like. Look, you're raising a, a an adopted child. Maybe they're in their teens. The birth parents want to speak to their birth child. That's a tough situation, you know. 
I, I think it's bad reasoning to be like, oh, she's going to prefer her birth parents. But I also think that there is maybe some valid reasoning that's like it's already complicated to raise a teenager. Like maybe just wait till they're 18 or something like that and then you can meet them. That being said, it's also tough because like is it your right to say so? But I guess that's like a secondary decision. Um, regardless, I think the adoptive parents for issuing an ultimatum, that makes them the asshole. Like, it, your role as the adoptive parent, I mean, just as the parents in general, I think, when your kid is getting married is not to start complicating the system by throwing out ultimatums, like only one of us can go, only one set of parents can go or something like that. As soon as you start to be like, it's either them or me, you're not the asshole if you're like, okay, well, it's them because they're not issuing ultimatums. It might be a different story if it was like, you know, don't invite Ted Bundy to the wedding or your dad's not going to come because he hates that guy. I would be like, okay, I'll invite my dad instead of Ted Bundy. But like, apart from that, it's like, you know, it's your special day. Just invite who, isn't that the spirit of like getting big groups of families together? It's like, you probably hate like, 5 to 15% of the people you're going to see, but it's not about you. You just go, you sit down, you clap, you say, ah, you have a glass of wine at the uh, reception, and then you leave, and in the car, you're like, fuck, I hate that guy. Jesus Christ, just shut up. Nobody cares about your houseboat. It's, that's what it's like, it's what it's supposed to be, at least. So I, I personally, I would say OP not the asshole on this one. You know, if anytime you issue an ultimatum, I don't think you can be upset if the uh, if the ultimatum like blows up in your face. So many of the, I mean, this one's not exactly that situation, but so many of the wedding posts are basically like, I'm getting married, but somebody who's not really involved in the wedding wants me to do something I don't want to do. Am I the asshole? It's like, no, you know, know your place. <laughs> if you're getting if you're one of the two people getting married you have like 100% influence everybody else show up eat some salmon eat some scallop potatoes take a couple of drinks from the open bar and then go home my two cents at least my two cents I gotta know who pooped mouth stop sabotaging my stream okay I'm trying to build some conversational momentum here. What did you run in the casino? Let me see, okay? Choose prediction. Who pooped last? Me or the baby? I'm deleting the bet. Because I don't know the answer. I couldn't tell you. And I don't want to go through the necessary research to figure out, okay? I know when I pooped. I don't know when the baby pooped last because I haven't had eyes on the baby for the last three and a half hours. It's not a scam. You all got your points back. Let that be a lesson to you. <laughs> There's so many parenting ones. I'm just skipping that one. How about this? Am I the asshole for invading my boyfriend's privacy and getting him and his coworker fired over inappropriate behavior? Um, I suppose it depends what the inappropriate behavior is. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> well, maybe. Was it like a crime? Let's find out. By the way, if you just hit enter on your keyboard, it'll create a paragraph break. And then you can, it just makes it a lot less intimidating when you load up a post like this because like the ideas are separated by white space. This is, this is big people talk for sure. I was sitting in the passenger seat of my best friend's ride, my boyfriend's car, when he ran into the store to pay for gas. I guess it was a long line because he took a while. Anyway, his phone was face up in the console and started vibrating. Against my better judgment, I unlocked his phone. Prior to this instant, we'd been struggling over trust issues, specifically him having wild, flirty, borderline sexting conversations over various hidden social media accounts and me obsessively looking through his phone and computer trying to catch him. All right, this is just not a good situation for anybody. That is just, uh, 
That is not a red flag. That is like, uh, it's just red all over. This is a terrible start. This is, it, there's never been an earlier everybody sucks here. In our most recent reconciliation, we promised each other we'd do better. That seems specific and easy to adhere to. Back to the situation at hand. I punked out on my promise. <laughs> One moment, please. That's comedy. During our last reconciliation, we promised each other to do better. Back to the situation at hand. I punked out on my promise and opened his phone while he was in the store. The incoming messages from his coworker Ben, most of which were pictures of pictures from another woman's phone. After some more context from Ben, it turned out these pictures were images he took using his phone of their supervisor's private photos in her cell phone that he had asked to borrow because his was dead. So he asked to borrow his supervisor's phone and then took photos on his phone of private photos from her phone? Yeah, that's actually like, I think that's criminal. Also, just because your phone is dead, what are you doing with somebody else's phone? You remember a phone? Unless you're calling 911, what are you doing with somebody else's phone? If your phone dies, you just ask them for a charger. You can't. You, I, my whole life is on this thing. You know, I got multi-factor authentication. I got, I got apps with like saved data and stuff like that. You can't have my phone. I'd rather give you my wallet, honestly, I think at this point. Anyway. Also, I guess his phone wasn't dead. That's a good point, but that's like, I guess, secondary. Also, I don't have that much data on my data plan. We only get two gigs a, a month. If you watch one YouTube video in the can, like I'm 50% tapped for the next three weeks. I get, it's too sensitive. This thing doesn't leave like my pocket, essentially, unless I'm holding it in my hands. Okay, so this is not a good idea. It, and in the eyes of anybody sane and also the law. He'd apparently gone into the bathroom to make a private call and texted my boyfriend photos of their supervisor, a beautiful young woman from Brazil. They were provocative pics, lingerie, some nudes, some hardcore like a dirty magazine centerfold. How old are you? Like, this is already gross, but also, like, are you 55 years old? There's nothing wrong with that. It would just add some context. Also, I can't figure out where I was in the discourse because there's no line breaks. I was immediately repulsed, hurt, and ashamed that my BF could be a part of this. I knew if I brought this up, it was going to escalate beyond anything I was ready to handle, so I pulled a Ben and took some pictures of the pictures that were sent to his phone, along with the additional messages from Ben detailing his process and getting the photos. And you took photos of the photos that shouldn't have been there to begin with? Now you've done the crime as well. Like, for less of a scumbag purpose, but like... Now these, these photos have been photocopied so many times. You just... It, it, it's out there. Anyway... Um, sorry, I gotta find myself again here. I returned the phone to the center console as though it had been untouched. Boyfriend returned to the car none the wiser until we pulled out the parking lot and came to a red light and he reached for his phone. Upon initial inspection, he did that not-so-subtle side-angled turn. Hold on. He reached for his phone when he hit a red light? So he was just, So he's, he's also, like, texting and driving, essentially. Considering that this is only one paragraph, like I hate everybody involved with this story immediately. Just wanted, just wanted to look at my texts. Just wanted to look at my texts at the red light. Just wait till you get home. Nobody's doing anything. I don't look at my phone at, at the red light. People are like, I, oh, you're not driving. Yeah, well, you, you know, your car's in drive unless you go park at a red light or something like that. And then also, you know what? You're causing... Everybody else behind you to get pissed off because you're going, and then the light turns green, and then you're like, uh, and then the car behind you's like, eh, and then you're like, okay, sorry, my mistake. I know you're like, that never happens, but I bet if I pushed you, you would be like, okay, it happened one time. That's one time too many. If everybody out there's doing it one time, I live in a city with like two million people in it. 
Don't look at what are you looking at your phone in a red light. Just exercise some discipline for once in your life. How long is the longest red light you've ever been at in your life? Like two minutes? Just listen to the radio. You're at an average red light for like 30 seconds. You can't not be electronically stimulated for 30 seconds. You need to see a doctor. That's... It, it, moving on. I'm going to take a photo of the chat right now. And then I'm going to take a photo of the photo of the chat so that I don't lose it. Stop using your phone while you drive. Like, obviously, don't use your phone while you're, like, on the highway. But also, you don't need to pick up your phone when you're at a red light and run the risk of inconveniencing everybody else behind you just because you can't go 10 seconds without seeing something that makes you pissed off. Sorry, okay. <clears throat> Upon initial inspection, he did that not-so-subtle side-angled turn so I wouldn't be able to see the screen, after which he put it immediately into his pocket and began acting super sus. I played stupid, but I'm sure he noticed the messages weren't on unread status and had his suspicions. We spent the rest of the afternoon in a weird mood, then I went home without so much as a goodbye. The next morning, I began corresponding with his company's HR department and the supervisor from the photos. Embarrassed and hurt, she confirmed she did lend her phone to Ben, and those pictures were in fact stolen from her phone. That afternoon, I got a call from my now BF, well, ex now, He's done with me, he says. He was fired. They both were. He claims I jumped the gun and had no way of knowing that Ben was going to involve him. I coldly told him I had no idea what he's talking about and hung up the phone. It's been a few days. We still haven't spoken. Am I the asshole? This is a, this is a ball of wax, man. This is a whole ball of wax. Um, <laughs> let's start at the, the highest level. I don't think you're the asshole for reporting a legitimate betrayal of trust and crime to an HR department at the relevant company. Like, that was a really gross thing for Ben in this situation to do. That should be reported. Now, here's where things get complicated. Is your boyfriend a scumbag? Yeah, but it's not like illegal to receive a text. It does seem to indicate that maybe there's, I don't want to say a pattern, but when Ben got this contraband, he was like, I know exactly who would want to see this. That is very sus, don't get me wrong. But he didn't actually take any illegal action that was proven over the course of this. So I don't know if he should have been fired, but that's more like, is HR the asshole, I guess? Ben is going bye-bye. That's a given. But the boyfriend, I don't know. I mean, let's be honest. I think it was one of those situations where you're like, he probably should be canned, but you're like, you're, you know, when you're like in court and you're like, I know you murdered this person, but like, I don't have the proof for it, but we all know it. And then that's when Gerard Butler says, you know... He, st he starts taking control of the cell phone signals to blow up everybody else's cell phone in um, law-abiding citizen. You know what I'm talking about? Now, I know in a perfect world, it would have been good if the boyfriend reported Ben first. But, like, if she called that night... Again, I'm not trying to be in the boyfriend's defense. It's just, like, he might have he been like, I'm going to do it tomorrow, and then not done it. He could have told the HR that? I don't know. We weren't kibitzing the HR situation. Now, like, okay. Anyway, those, excuse me, a new version of Wavelink is available. <laughs> I will close this. Anybody else use the Elgato Wave 3 microphone? I'll just hit remind me later on that one. Update now. It's a good mic, don't get me wrong. I wish it would not ever pop up anything, though. So, like, Ben is a future convict. Soon to be incarcerated. 
Boyfriend, definitely like a dirtbag, no doubt about it. May or may not be criminally culpable. That's beyond my area of expertise, but certainly a scumbag. I don't really think that in this, given the, the scale of the problem with this situation, I don't think that the girlfriend is like an asshole for unlocking her boyfriend's phone. Like if this was a normal situation between normal people and there was no reason to distrust anything, if she looked through her boyfriend's phone, I would be like, that's an asshole move. But this guy's a real piece of work. I mean, she opened his phone and she found something immediately. I'm not saying that justifies betraying the trust of her boyfriend, but at the same time, you know, it's not like she opened it and she found like, uh, you know, just a photo of him, a selfie of him in the gym or something. It was like, you know, literally like that day. <laughs> She's kind of an ass. I mean, maybe this is not something you think about rationally in the moment, but I feel like it's kind of an asshole move to then take photos of the photos. But maybe I'm like overly adhering to the letter of the law. Maybe, maybe it was good that she had them so at least she could give proof to HR in case it was deleted. So you know what? Upon thinking about that, I don't necessarily think she sucks. If she sucks, it's only for not uh, probably breaking up with this scumbag earlier. So I would just say not the asshole. I think that's where I've come around here. My personal feelings aside, based on the way that she wrote and um, the fact that she's with someone who texts and drives... My personal judgments and biases aside, I don't think she's necessarily the asshole in this situation. As a poster, maybe. As a, as a human being, in the, given this situation, I would say not the asshole. Not the asshole, 69%. Nice. Am I the asshole... For a joke I made during my best man speech. I'm inclined to say not the asshole, but maybe that's just because I could see this happening to me. I34M was recently the best man at my friend's second wedding. I was also the best man at his first. I saw this joke online and it made me laugh, so I stole it for my opening speech. I said, right, well, welcome back, everyone, which got more than a few laughs, especially from the bride who seemed to find it hilarious. That's really funny. That's like, <laughs> that's actually, look, if you can't laugh at that, everybody's a grown up. Life's funny. Come on. Everything went well. Speech over and done with, though later on, after a few drinks, my friend began to rip me a new asshole, telling me I was out of line with that kind of joke and how I'd embarrassed him and it wasn't funny and I shouldn't have brought his last marriage into this. I mean, a best man speech will always be more jokey than anything, and beyond that, it was fairly tame, and that was the only reference to his last marriage. Was I really out of line? No. Not the ass. That's the easiest one I've ever seen. Not the asshole. The, not even like a little bit. That's just funny. You would have been an asshole if you'd been like, hey, uh, who wants to, anybody want to pre-book the venue for wedding three? We can save 25% if we get in right now. Like that would make you kind of an asshole. But just saying, welcome back, everyone. That's great. That's, even that's still pretty funny. All right, well, I know who I'm not asking to be my best man. Am I the asshole for refusing to tell, for, let, let me rephrase. Am I the asshole for telling my GF I refuse to plan my meals in advance? I'm going to guess, let me guess. Everything else in your life is going fine. <laughs> I, 34 male, run a beautiful bed and breakfast, but that's an aside. People pay me to stay in my house. Rad. Okay, hold on, sorry. There you go. <clears throat> I started to live with my girlfriend almost six months ago. I'm 34 male, she's 35 female. And we have this ongoing issue that just escalated. She has this weird obsession with planning food like it's the most important topic in the world. She constantly asks what my plans are for food the moment I wake up. She wanted to have discussions about us doing a weekly chart. WTF? 
with WTF with meals, asks me for lists whenever she goes to the store and is just super pushy. I'll be honest with you. I kind of like having my meals. I don't, I don't plan them out weekly, but I kind of would like to. I don't know if I have that kind of like drive right now, but that just seems like a smart idea to have all of your, at least your like, you know, lunches and dinners planned out weekly so that you know what to buy when you go to the grocery store. That doesn't mean you can't occasionally be like, you know, I know we were supposed to have, you know, some falafel tonight, but do you want to just order a pizza? I'm tired. You, you can pivot off of the chart, you know, on, a, on an at runtime basis. But still, like, you know, it's nice to be organized like that. Because you structure the rest of your day around it. That's why I like having a set meal time and a snack time, like a, like a kid that's in preschool. Because <laughs> then I'm like, well, I, you know, I had breakfast at like 8.30, and then I know I'll, maybe I'll have a snack like during the first ad break of the stream, then I'll eat lunch at 2, and then I won't eat anything because we usually have dinner around like 6.30, and then I don't have to eat before bed, and then I feel like in the interim periods, it helps me like focus more. But anyway... My stance is this. We're two adults. I have zero expectations of her to cook. Come on. I, I get it. You're a woke king, but zero? Zero? I feel like we, my wife and I, have expectations of one another to cook. That just seems normal to me. Zero at all? I was never in a situation where I was unable to eat because I didn't plan food in advance. I really can't decide what I want before I'm actually hungry, and I don't see any need to limit myself to these choices. Okay, a 2x a day DoorDash customer has been spotted. What do you mean you've never been in a... You couldn't figure out what you want? I'm getting more mad about this one than about the revenge porn one, which says something about me. But it's just, it's very much in my wheelhouse to get upset about mundane things because you can go in harder without it being such a sensitive issue. But like, you realize that like when you're hungry, you're hungry for food. It's not like you, spe I'm specifically hungry for a cheeseburger Nothing else would satisfy this hunger. You can have a craving, which is also fine, but you don't need to indulge a craving at every single meal. Some meals, you're like, I'm going to specifically go out of my way to indulge a craving. Whether healthy or unhealthy, I'm, I'm not trying to make that part of the, the distinction. But most of the meals I eat are like, I want to eat food that tastes pretty good at a minimum, but whatever it is doesn't matter that much. That's, at least that's the way I, my mental model for, for how I try to eat at least. I never spend more than 30 minutes cooking. Again, I'm like, I'm, I'm getting pissed off because these are just lies. What do you, you, you're 34 years old, you've never spent more than 30 minutes cooking? Have a little ambition. Every meal you've ever cooked is literally the length of Rachel Ray's television program where she teaches people how to make easy meals on weekday nights when they have kids in 30 minutes or less. He might be a microwave lord. I'm not even trying to... It's not... I'm not judging his food consumption. I'm just judging his words, which are misleading. I'm fine with us ordering if we're not in the mood. We have so many options. Stores is near... They do be. So we can always buy stuff. There's always something at home and we can always do our own thing. Shortly, the topic bores me to death and started to annoy the shit out of me. One thing that has not been touched upon here is why are you so annoyed by making a plan? Like every, the whole discourse, and I mean, I've spent a little too much time mining the paragraph, I guess. But like the whole discourse is about like why you shouldn't have to do it. But like, you know, what's wrong with it? I just don't understand. You could plan your whole week in like less than 15 minutes. 
I, I mean, you could also have like a, a wide variety of food. You don't have to have like five of the same dinner, five of the same lunch. You could mix it up every single day. Being asked every day would annoy me. I'm, now you got me nervous because that's like literally what I do. It might be like 11 a.m. and I'll ask Kate, like, what do you want to do for dinner? I've, it's never been a problem, though. But I think the other reason that that works fine for me is because I only feel the pull to choose the dinner like 2x weekly. So if she says, like, I want to have this, I'm like, that's no problem. And if she says, I don't really know what to have, I'm like, all right, I can step in. I can, I can fill that void. Anyway, the other day she again made a speech. <laughs> Women, am I right? Just so you know, I would, it would make my life easier if I could structure our weekly schedules so that I could buy the things I need to buy at the grocery store and save more time so that we could spend that time in a quality way together throughout the week instead of constantly having to run to the grocery store to buy the one ingredient we were missing because we didn't make a plan and you specifically want to have uh, vegetable lasagna for dinner tonight? <laughs> Just do it. Come on. Making a speech that I need to tell her. This is such like, I hate that I'm going in too hard, but this is like such little kid energy. The other day she again made a speech that I need to tell her what I want to eat. So stupid. Why don't you just read my mind so that we can plan? And I just bluntly told her that by now, isn't it clear that I can't and don't want to decide on these things in advance? That she can just do what she wants and I'll figure out my own shit the way I did all the time. This is a great relationship. This is so good. Let's just eat our own dinners from now on because I can't be bothered to tell you I want to have soft tacos on Wednesdays on Monday. She said that if I don't communicate what I want to eat to her, we can't plan or get all the necessary ingredients. I asked her when did we ever experience an issue because I expected to eat something I didn't have ingredients for and also that I don't expect her to make food. We can see who is in the mood to cook, order, have something simple. I finally told her just to never ask this again, that I'm never going to do fucking Excel sheets with weekly meal plans to relax and do what she wants. She is now pissed and ignoring me. So emotional. She is now pissed and ignoring me. I can't imagine why. I don't get it. This whole thing seems like a made up issue. Well, maybe like, I mean, I shouldn't that you're literally older than me just to say, uh, like, I, I feel like I'm like talking up at this one. So I'm kind of embarrassed to be doing so. But maybe the issue started with the food planning and then actually you started swearing at her and telling her that you never want to do this and don't ever bring up any issue that you have to me ever again. Um, that, that might have exacerbated some feelings of resentment that maybe came up using the food issue in the first place. That's just the way I'm seeing the situation, but maybe I'm drawing too many inferences. Some additional info. Both of us are fit. Quit bragging. We eat fine, no health issues. That dot, 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 that would make her particularly concerned. Very scary sentence. I'm at the point where I want to walk out of the room whenever she asks anything about food. This is the first time I feel motivated to check the comments in a while because we are at 34% you're the asshole, 27% no assholes here, 27% not the asshole. This is like way more of a three horse race than I thought. I got to read some of the comments that say not the asshole. I also hate when my stupid mom asked me to clean my room because there's rats everywhere. I told you I'm not going to clean it. I'm my own man. So true. So true. My room, my rules. Most people plan menus in advance so they can make a grocery list. It's not a weird obsession. It's normal. You're the asshole. It, it, certified correct. What is this? 
It's weird because he has not expectation to be fed by her. He is perfectly happy to decide and eat what he wants when he wants. He doesn't have to oblige her need to meal plan. Do you think that a romantic relationship is just a roommate that occasionally you have intercourse with? You're trying to build like intimacy and shared experiences and have conversations and you know build a life together and stuff like that it's not you start eating your meals and you know you don't even eat a dinner with one another with one another i mean if that's what you want like if one of you is like i am a vegetarian and another person's like i don't really like vegetarian food then so be it but like just because you don't want to fill in like a little grid with what food you'd want to eat on like any specific. I mean, like I, you're 34 years old. I don't even want to be like a, a dickhead about it. But like you're 34 years old. Sometimes you don't get to choose what you're going to eat 15 minutes in advance of when you eat it. You got other problems like. It's that's like how uh, like my literal baby feels about food. It's like yesterday we got Vietnamese food. We made her up a little plate of the Vietnamese food, I chopped her up a little bit of the pork chop, we gave her a little bit of rice, we, we gave her a little bit of like the, the noodles from the pho, like chopped up so she, that she could actually eat them. She went to take one bite and was like, I hate this, give me pasta. She's 16 months old, we gave her pasta. There's no reasoning with that, there's nothing you can do. When you're 34 years old, sometimes you just gotta be like, okay, maybe on the occasional night, I'm gonna have to eat like my second favorite food instead of my favorite. Like, it's just, it's just very surprising to me that someone could make it 34 years on the planet and still have this kind of, like, juvenile attitude. Anyway, we can, I think we can collapse the top-level comment. Not the asshole, but, or, sorry, no assholes here. No assholes here, but I absolutely could not live with you. When two people are having meals together, it's normal to plan in advance. It's less expensive and ensures both people are happy. My husband and I plan for a week ahead, as do most households, as going to the supermarket every other day is a chore. Some people wouldn't call it a chore. Some people would see that as a value judgment. Some people would call it a hobby uh, or a lifestyle. Filling up the anecdote machine for uh, future streams. I mean, I, I don't see why you had to be so offensive to me to call my lifestyle a chore, but okay, you do you, Luge87. I still don't think it's no asshole, though. It's not even, like, I think he's kind of an asshole for not at least trying to make a food plan, for not at least making an effort once. But, like, I think he's definitely an asshole for, like, being so annoyed that she wants to do it. That he got so mad he told her to never effing bring it up ever again. Like, that's the red flag. Your girlfriend's level of planning around meals does seem exhausting and unnecessary, and I get why it annoys you. Now, I am not like a detail-oriented individual, but this, maybe it's because it appeals to me, but it doesn't seem exhausting to me to at least come out with like five days of meals. Because it's not really 15 meals. Like, you're going to probably eat the same thing for breakfast every day, you're probably going to eat roughly the same thing for lunch every day. You're really just planning, like, dinners. And even then, like, is, it, it, how long does it take to be like, what do you want to have this week? It just seems kind of crazy to me. Oh, no, having to compromise? I don't know. I guess, I don't know. Food means different things to different people. I'm just always, it's not like a, you know, I grew up in the school of hard knocks or something like that, but I just love to eat. So as long as like the food is cooked and there was an effort to make it taste good, I don't really care if it's like roast beef and mashed potatoes or like a vegetarian chili or, you know, turkey sandwich or whatever. Like it's all, I'm just like, ooh, delicious. Every day, I'm like, wow, this is really good. And I believe it the whole time. I've only lied about it a couple times in my entire life. I just, it, it, as long as it, you know, it, food is designed to taste good. 
people, people G, people talk. I mean, I'm not that, I mean, no assholes here IMO, but I don't understand how people can shop for food without knowing what they're going to eat. On Sundays, I meal plan for the entire week and go to the supermarket once. I do feel like before I rule on this, I would love to see this guy's garbage can slash compost bin. Because I feel like once a month, he throws out like $35 worth of groceries. Like a bag full of spinach that he used like one time. I'm not saying I've never done it, but like... It just seems like you have so much more food waste if you're not planning. That's my, that's my hunch, at least. Info. Do you ever use ingredients she has purchased? Planning food can mean less waste. Okay, hold on. He replied to one comment basically saying he takes her pantry staples and some of her fresh ingredients if he feels like she has too many of them. For example, if she has a whole head of broccoli, which isn't really even that much broccoli, that would drive me insane if I were her. This man is treating you like you're a crazy nag and simultaneously benefiting from and undermining your meal planning. I would be livid. That is so funny. If he's actually taking from the food that she bought with her own planned meals in order to make the meals, and then he's also saying, when have I ever had the struggle to eat? Oh, man. This is actually fantastic. Info, do you share a food budget? Hold on. Info, I don't want to see info. I want to see judgments. Not the asshole. You are both totally correct. I identify with both of you. I feel like this. You're a coward. He's the asshole. Like, without being too judgmental, you're more like this guy. He's a 34-year-old man who said, wah, wah, I like to eat uh, what I want to eat, but I only know 10 minutes before I'm hungry. Like, it doesn't make any sense. I don't know. Like, this one, I'm, my ruling is grow up. Honestly, your girlfriend should break up with you. It sounds like you don't respect her and that it's, this is just um, an issue where all those feelings are being poured in. It's not really about the issue. About the issue, you're being a big baby and it sounds like even when you wrote it, which probably made you sound as sympathetic as possible, she sounds like the person who's the protagonist and you sound like a big dickhead. So in reality, it's probably even worse. You're probably like sulking because you got to eat a delicious meal, but it wasn't exactly what you wanted. Like you're 34 years old, grow up. I hope that story's fake. Okay, a lot of stories have already been deleted by mods. <laughs> For example, am I the asshole for asking my mom to pay my fiance after she canceled her makeup for our wedding? Am people talk, please. Am I the asshole for asking my mom to pay my fiance after she, my mom, canceled her, my fiance, makeup for my wedding? Anyway, the post was deleted, so we'll never know. Am I the asshole for only continuing to pay for my adult children who have started families? <laughs> <laughs> maybe hello reddit very nice to meet you oh you sweet summer child i'm writing to ask you about an ongoing argument i'm having with my fourth daughter who i have been told to call emma while on this subreddit in short i've devoted myself male 64 to my career and future family since I was 17 and started my first savings account. And I've managed to accrue quite a bit, but not an infinite amount of money. I have eight children! Five daughters and three sons, and they've been the true lights of my life. Aw. I've paid for all of them to be properly educated and all expenses up to their 21st birthday. That's nice. Like, that's a good thing. My issue is this. When my second daughter was 19, she fell pregnant and I made the decision to help her financially with the child after her 21st birthday. I've been supporting her family since and eventually made the rule that as long as any of my own children had a child, the financial support would continue until said child turned 21. Uh, 
You ever hear the, um, the expression in economics that is, you show me the incentives and I'll show you the outcomes? How many grandkids you got? Just be honest. You, you, you got 72 grandkids? There's no way you don't have 72 grandkids. Every kid pushes the can down the road that you get supported for another 21 years. This is incredible. Anyway, um, the amount I pay includes rent, food, tuition, and a modest monthly recreation fund. Since, since then, five of my children have started families all early. I mean, honestly, if the government wants to, like, up the birth rate, they should read this post. We're out here paying like two grand for daycare. There's like, I'm not saying it's hard to have kids like financially. I'm not going to be that guy that's like, you pay me money because I have a child. I'm just saying like having kids is expensive. This guy has single-handedly like raised the birth rate in the United States of America just by turning on the money printer. No, of course they're having kids early, if you, which is not even necessarily a bad thing, but of course they're having kids early if they know that all of their needs are going to be supported for the next 21 years. My youngest daughter is not yet 21, so she's covered as well. But my fourth daughter, Emma, and my youngest son have not had any children. Emma has taken umbrage with this. She is married and considers her pets to be her children. However, her pets do not require tuition or a recreation budget or extra money to live in a child-friendly area. She claims that I am pushing her into having children she does not want as she is child-free. Well, look, this is actually... She's kind of right. Again, I'm taking this almost too much from like a, a, a Spock viewpoint. But you are kind of... You're, you're exerting force in the direction of incentivizing her having children. That doesn't mean you're forcing her, but I would say it's a, it's a literal pressure... I mean, if you could maybe get like, you know, $1,500 a month for 21 years just by having a child, is certainly, that's a pressure, whether you consider it a positive or a negative. I just feel as though as a college-educated woman with a two-income home and very few responsibilities, she is able to take care of herself. My youngest son has not made any complaints. Emma says that is favoritism, and I'm trying to force a lifestyle on my kids. I do not believe I'm in the wrong here, but my youngest son has guided me here to get a less biased opinion. Youngest son is a Redditor. You ever thought maybe you should have stopped at seven? You hate to see it. Well then, Reddit, am I the asshole? You're the asshole 61, not the asshole 29. This is fucked up, man. <sighs> okay, like... I don't think... This is, this is a tough one. I'm going into the comments. That's why I took the screen off for a second here. It's tough, okay? I don't want to poison the well by putting the comments up yet. Why would he be an asshole? That's my, that's my first question. And the only answer I can come up with is that not all eight of his kids are receiving the same level of support. What I'm about to say might be annoying. And some people, you have the right to disagree with me here. But it also seems like not all eight of his kids have the same level of need. I Obviously, I can't speak to what the lifestyles of all eight children are. And some people might have expenses that they incur that are unnecessary. Some people might have incomes that are higher than others. But like, I don't, I mean, again, I'm not in this position, but I would feel like if I had siblings and they had kids and I didn't, and my parents were like, we kick them a little extra every month, like as a result of that, I would be like, that makes a lot of sense. I, w I would like to think that I wouldn't be upset. It, 
it de- if it was like eight grand a month, I might adopt at that point if I were in the position to. Because, I mean, that's... A, it, it does... I mean, I almost feel like I need a little info here that's like, you know... <laughs> what's the, how much money are we talking? Because your description of the money was not infinite, which is literally like the highest real number that you could create is within that upper bound. So I don't know. Either way, I don't feel like I would like to think. Well, I don't know. Like, I, I, when would I start to be a, a little annoyed? I guess if, like, the money being paid as a subsidy for having a grandchild was, like, more monthly than the salary I made, I would probably be like, what the fuck? I don't know. This is a really complicated question. But also, I don't know, maybe... I'm like, you know, the millennials were constantly being pulled by the boomers towards pulling yourself up by your bootstraps and pulled by the zoomers to, like you know, we got to treat absolutely everybody fairly, right? This is like, it's a di- very difficult crystal ball for for someone to look at. I feel like if she's, she's not a kid, like she's over the age of 21, maybe even older than that. Like, how long do you expect your your parents to pay your rent, tuition, and a extra fund for incidental recreational activities why don't his kids just support their families too you see this daughter is trying to blow up the subsidy for everybody and that's what I don't respect I'm putting a lot of I'm, I'm doing some character assassination without even really knowing who she is but I feel like she's trying to tell the teacher that they forgot to assign homework if you're the other siblings, you got to be like, yo, shut the fuck up. We'll all kick you like, we'll, we'll each pitch in 10% of our monthly slush fund and give it to you as hush money. And then everybody comes out in the green, right? Like, should, there's got to be a way to work this out that doesn't lead to the whole thing being torn down because your dad's like, oh, we got to be fair to everybody so nobody gets a subsidy anymore. If you could just, if everybody could just kick in a ten percent of theirs, we wouldn't have a problem. Okay. Anyway, I already know where Reddit's going to be on this, but you know what? Maybe this is an opportunity for me to learn something. Maybe this is an opportunity for me to learn something, or just shout. We'll see. You're the asshole. You can't base support on if your kid has a kid or not. Either do them all or do none of them. Emma's right. Look. I think you, you, whether or not you can, maybe you could say you should or you shouldn't, but you definitely can. I mean, you can kind of do like whatever you want. You could just give your favorite kid a lot of money. It's called a will. It happens all the time. You don't have to. I mean, I think it's... (laughs) I don't know if we're ready for this yet. I haven't really thought out my opinion on this before I started saying it. But I don't really think that in a situation like this, you have to treat all of your kids equally. Probably some of your kids are working as hard as they can, being grateful, giving you phone calls, dropping off with homemade apple pies and stuff like that. And some of your kids probably only call you when they need that recreational fund topped off a little bit. Why should you have to give all eight kids the same amount of support? I feel like the ones who are grateful for it, you give them a little bit of extra sauce on top. And the ones who are like, you know, thanks for the money, Dad. See you in two months. Maybe they get cut off a little faster. It's bad parenting. I don't think it... I think it would be bad parenting to keep a Kieran Culkin from succession sucking on the money pipe for like 30 years without developing any real skills that can allow them to become self-sufficient. They're like kids and they're, they're, they're children on a literal sense, but they're adults in a literal sense as well.
Succession. So true. So true. I'm not watching Succession yet. I just have an ambient awareness of it. Did the reference compute? You're the asshole. Yes, it's technically your money, and you can throw it at criminals and gangs if you want. But ethically, you're basically teaching grown adults to procreate for the sake of handouts, and you're teaching your other children that they aren't going to have equal support from their parents unless they procreate, that your love is conditional on whether... Hey, come on, what are you talking about? Oh, if you really love me, pay me $4,000, Dad. What are you talking about? You're teaching your already grown adult children, almost all of which you have kids themselves already, that your love is conditional. What the hell are you talking? This is insanity. You can clean up the situation by actually making it about the kids. Here, let me buy your kids their back-to-school supplies or let me pay for their babysitting so you can join the whole family on the trip as a gift for the kids. You saying, here's $500, which you can use on whatever you want because you have kids, is not for the kids. All right, so the problem that you have is not with the money. The problem that you have is with the accounting. As long as instead of giving them $500, you buy them $500 worth of toys, then it's not a problem anymore. As long as, hey, as long as you're not giving them $500 cash and instead you're just buying them like a Dolce & Gabbana backpack to take to preschool, then there's nothing to worry about. PS5s for all the grandkids. Yay! Hold on, take me back. You're the asshole. This goes way above and beyond just helping out with extra expenses of having children. You're paying for their entire life. You're basically spoiling your children with families while completely stiffing your children who don't have kids. Extreme favoritism. This is all true, but I think you might be saying that because you're not the favorite. I think you got to evaluate this from a utilitarian standpoint. Seven people are very happy with this arrangement right now one person's got all the problems read the reply okay <clears throat> it's hardly a surprise all of his kids ended up being parents so young op basically told them not to worry about growing up because he would take care of them that yes that's true that's definitely true that's pretty true and yes and I mean, we're in a strange situation here where people younger than the child in this post are giving parenting advice to the parent who is old enough to be their great-grandparent. It's like 16-year-old kids are like, you're teaching your kids who are 50% older than me bad life lessons. You're the asshole, so you selectively help your children based on their willingness and ability to reproduce. You've been telling your youngest kids their lives aren't important to you. They don't matter. Their futures don't matter. I don't think anybody's saying that their futures don't matter. Just maybe that, you know, it doesn't matter $3,200 a month <laughs> worth. <laughs> Just it matters maybe a little bit less. You're the asshole for financially incentivizing your children to have children before they're 21. No, these at least get it right. He's financializing, financially incentivizing his children to have children the day after they turn 21. Not before. Then you're wasting some of the window because you've got an overlap between when you would be receiving the subsidy and between when your child would be receiving the subsidy. The optimum way to do it is to have like a C-section appointment for the day after you turn 21, and then you're covered until you're 42. And you don't have to lie in your post. They would be far more stable financially if they waited with or without your temporarily extended support and making it conditional on doing something excruciatingly costly in the long run is counter to their best interests. This post just makes me mad because I, I'm not mad at their opinion. I'm just mad that they're lying. I actually think that they basically have the most stable job of all time. Literally all of their 
fixed expenses are being handled for 21 years as soon as they have a child. Well, you could think that's fucked up. I mean, it is a little weird, don't get me wrong. But like, what do you mean it's not in their best financial interest? I think it's absolutely in their best financial interest. That's why they're doing it so early, I assume. It's honestly, it's kind of like, uh, I wouldn't do that, but I'm like, it's kind of sick. Like if one of my friends had this deal, I would be like, dude, you're so lucky. I wouldn't be like, wow, your dad really screwed up. He's got your priorities all messed up. I would be like, bro, look at this. <laughs> look at you. Can we do Mario Red? It makes me so mad. <laughs> Soon. I just like it. I, and again, I don't have a good answer for this, but it like, it just annoys me that very few people seem to be like, yes, you should pay your other daughter the subsidy. Everybody just seems to be like, you're paying your other seven kids too much. Shut the fuck up. You're going to ruin a good thing. At least be like, it would be fair to pay everybody. That, I can at least meet you in the middle on that one. When they're like, you're... By giving too much money to your adult children, you're uh, making their lives too easy. I'm like, yeah, shut up, dude. You jealous? Like, this is a sick setup. You're the asshole. Oh, dude, here we go. I understand what you're trying to do, but does Emma never want to have kids? If so, why isn't she getting a recreation allowance? That's true. Okay. You know, I mean, you could give her like a little bit. People that get more because they have children piss me off. Just because they choose to procreate doesn't mean they're entitled to free childcare, tax breaks, extra sick days, leniency on, on being on time, extra stimulus check, getting a seat on the bus, priority boarding on the plane. Let's go through these. They shouldn't be entitled to free childcare. Any, any offerers in chat? Just offering this as an option. If, if there's an option for free childcare that's been subsidized by the government, I sure as shit haven't seen it. Tax breaks? I don't know. That might be true. I don't know if it's true up here, but I'm assuming it's true in, the, in parts of the U.S. Extra sick days? I also don't know if that's true. Leniency on being on time? Look, on principle, I agree everybody should be on time, okay? But like, is sometimes your kid, you know, poops her pants, you change her diaper, and then as soon as you put her new diaper on, she poops her pants again. Do we want to have a society where, like, somebody's like, sorry, you got to stay in your shitty diaper for eight hours so I'm not three minutes late for work? Or do we want to have a society where when shit happens, we're like, oh, I understand. If it becomes a habit, we'll talk about it. But in, instead, like, I understand sometimes real life pops up. Getting a seat on the bus... Yes, if, if somebody gets on the bus with a baby or a little kid, they should get a priority seat on the bus. That's just insanity that you're like, I'm not giving up my seat for a baby. Who are you? Ayn Rand? Like that's, come on. Priority boarding on a plane? You want the families to have priority boarding on an airplane. You don't want to be in your seat and then have like a three-year-old kid have to squirm in past you to get in their seat you want the kids to be sitting down plus with priority boarding i mean they get overhead bin storage i guess but like why do you want to sit on the airplane and just stare at the ads on the screen until takeoff you could be sitting on an airplane for like an hour before it actually starts to taxi out anyway like i agree with some of those But, like, the bus just makes you sound like a sociopath. I get, if, if, like, a 10-year-old gets on the bus, I would probably give up my seat. Do I think you're a bad person if you don't give up your seat? No. But if, like, a mom, you know, with a stroller gets on the bus and you don't give up your seat, that's kind of like, I mean, that <laughs> says something about your personality, in my opinion. Go ahead, be mad. 
It's so unfair for those people who choose different paths in life. It's not people without children's fault. Others have chosen a difficult lifestyle of parenting. I can understand why Emma's upset. Look, this is true, but also, like, it, you're talking about a different seat on the bus. Oh, no, I have to stand up on the bus because somebody has a... Any, look, we don't need to go down this road too much. I'm getting short-circuited again. I can hear... <laughs> the mind jammer has popped on. I love... Too many line breaks is also scary. It makes me feel like I'm being shouted at with clap emojis. I'm shoveling snow. Keep the hot takes coming. I'll do my best. It's your money. Do with it as you please. However, supporting lifestyles for your other children because they procreated is pretty shitty. Bad look. You're supposed to write bad look there. Also, do you look at the accounts for the families with children to make sure they're spending the extra money on their kids? Otherwise, what's to say they aren't taking that extra money and using it to get their hair done? I got the hair done. Check my nails. Baby, how you feeling? I know Lizzo. I, I, you can't sneak in a little extra Lizzo reference without me knowing it. Why should Emma have to save up her recreational things when you're paying those with kids to do them? Why is Emma getting shorted life experiences because she doesn't have kids? What I mean is the family wants to go to the Grand Canyon. You pay for the trip. Emma wants to go to the Grand Canyon. Emma has to save up and pay for said trip. That's shitty shorting Emma's experiences because she doesn't have kids. Kids don't make you entitled to the extra perks of life. Now... This is a situation where she's literally talking about people with children being paid like a substantial monthly salary to have a kid. I think they have a point in this situation. I resent the framing that as soon as you have a child, a whole new world of tolerance uh, opens up to you where people are like, oh, you have a kid? Here, take my seat on the bus. Here's free things. Don't pay your taxes this year. Big deal. Life gets so much easier. That is like, I think you're living in a fantasy world where you're the main character who's also a victim. In this one situation, I do think you have a point. I can't even read chat. It's scrolling. It's not that it's scrolling too fast. It's that usually it's emojis. But now in React Court, it's always essays, so I can't finish a full sentence um, before it scrolls off of my screen. Also, why are you a certified proctologist? What is this? Does that mean you have, like, you've received a certain amount of awards in, uh, in the Am I the Asshole subreddit? Certified proctologist. I want to see, like, the first not the asshole. You're the asshole. You're punishing your other children for being responsible about birth control. Look. Is it, I forgot about this part of Am I the Asshole, where you can't just evaluate something on the issues that are presented. I'm guilty of it, too. But they also add in, like, one more thing. That's like, what if, you know, your you're, you're, you're punishing your daughter for, like not making the climate worse. And I'm like, do you see like another oil tanker exploded off the coast of Nigeria yesterday? We're talking about like grains of sand versus enormous beaches at this point. Like we gotta, we don't just have to posture in this sort of way. We could talk about the actual issues at hand. Are you trying to start your own weird family cult by bribing them to have kids? Just rude, honestly. You're the asshole, but softly, aka I don't read. Why don't you give her the recreation money too? She clearly doesn't need the rest, but it would be a good compromise. Honestly, that might be a good compromise. That seems... It's, OP seems quite reasonable. Look at this. This isn't about monetary support, but about the way you're making your daughter feel less equal for her life choices. I agree families with kids tend to have higher costs and it's generous. You're supporting them, but you're making your daughter feels like, feel like she's the odd one out. Maybe offer to pay for part of her. Yeah, th this is all very reasonable. It just hates that, or I just hate that we had to scroll down so far to get to like the, the actual solutions focused. Whereas like the first 12 posts were like, you're a bad father. And I'm like, it seems like he's doing a pretty good job. I bet his kids would give him high marks in the, in the father of the year survey, quite frankly. You're on Reddit, what'd you expect? That's true. That's pretty true. 
Info, if one of your children was infertile, would you support them financially or not? It, you see what I mean about like, you, you can't just debate on the issues. Instead, you come up with your own head cannon that paints someone in like the worst possible light that they could possibly be in. This situation did not happen, but hypothetically, if it did, how would you react? Uh, don't think. Three, two, one. Come on. That's, you're, just, you're just looking for a reason to be upset at this individual. You could be upset because they're not paying out an equal share. You don't have to, like, make stuff up to be mad at. That's what Twitter's for. <laughs> oh, man. Am I the asshole for making... I love the boyfriend-girlfriend ones. Because the, the ones that are like, am I the asshole for calling my wife a bitch? Like, those ones are sad because you're, like, legally kind of, like, locked in. At least, you know, there's consequences to, to getting out of it. The boyfriend-girlfriend ones are just funny. Because I'm like, ah, man, you should probably... Not in all of these circumstances, but, like, there's, like, two answers. One is, like, you guys should just talk to each other instead of the internet. And then the other one is, like, you should definitely break up. Am I the asshole for making my girlfriend pay for everything after she implied she does? Whew, that's juicy. That is juicy. Me, 29, and Maddie have been together for three years. We live together. Maddie is an anesthesiologist, and I own my own landscape design company. Our budget is $35 million. Due to me working mornings and being home earlier, I do most of the shopping and cooking. We split all other duties 50-50 and pay 50-50 on all bills. I make solid money, but most of it is put back into my business, so I don't have as much spending money as Maddie. Maddie likes to think I'm some sort of trophy boyfriend. Okay? First time was when we were out with her family. She's the pride of her family because her family never went to college, let alone medical school. Maddie says OP does most of the housework, so I'm not overwhelmed when I get home. Maddie, her aunt said, Maddie, it's amazing you snagged yourself a trophy boyfriend while working so many hours. Then Maddie's mom said, look at you finding a man who supports you. Maddie said, I'm glad I can support the both of us. Okay. The aunt made a joke. If you take offense to it, that's fine. The mom literally said something nice to you. I will say, it might annoy me if... My girlfriend said, I'm glad I can support the both, both of us because that is an insinuation that you're a, you're a single income household when he is clearly also working. And I, I don't know the financial situation of his business, but still, that's, that's kind of over the line. She told her friends she was treating me to a vacation. Her, mom's, her friend said, wow, Maddie, sugar mama out here. Again, okay, so like she's kind of misrepresenting the relationship to her friends. All of her friends' comments seem, like, very nice so far. They don't seem like they're like, hey, your deadbeat boyfriend is, like, so lucky to have you. It seems like those, these are just polite comments. Wow, Maddie sugar mama out here. That's just funny. That's okay. I told Maddie how uncomfortable it was. She told everyone she was buying the trip. Her response was, I was being ridiculous because we're a team. Okay. My parents asked how we were enjoying the new place. We recently moved. Maddie started going on about how much more house it is and how she's thankful for my help and willingness to support her career. A couple things about how supportive I am, how my job is tough on me. I don't find it that tough. See? A, a, a blue-collar worker not calling their job that tough? And anytime I say it on stream, everybody's like, oh, bad take, bad take. Straight from the horse's mouth. Apology accepted. And how she's thankful she's able to cover the house while I build my business. Afterwards, my parents called me to ask if everything was okay. If my business was struggling and if Maddie was having to cover for us, they could help out. I said Maddie spent more on the down payment than I did, but in no way did she cover our house. <clears throat> I brought this up to Maddie and she sees no problem. She says I should be glad to have a girlfriend who makes money and wants to splurge on me. So I haven't paid for a thing in the last four months. Date nights, tickets, grocery, Wi-Fi, gas, nothing. I stopped cooking, so now Maddie orders food for us. Whenever the bill shows up, I say, she's got it. Or whenever I need gas, hey, babe, can you get this one? I'll cook your favorite food later, though. Maddie hasn't said anything, but I think she's getting annoyed. So last weekend, it was me, her, her sister, brother-in-law, and parents. When the bill showed up, the waiter gave it to me. 
I said, I'm actually the trophy boyfriend, so I don't pay for things, and handed the bill to Maddie. On the way home, she was being standoffish. All she said was, you didn't have to do that. I said, I covered half my bills, paid for the dates, bought her gifts, and didn't like that she implied she pays for everything. I said, if she wants me to quit doing this, then she can tell everyone the truth, or she can keep paying. Am I the asshole? It's actually hilarious. I don't know. I don't really think he's... This, normally, I, I talk about how like this petty stuff is unnecessary and kind of makes you seem like a dickhead here i'm like i don't know i'm kind of like i think you taught her a lesson quite frankly four months is like a really long time to keep this bit up don't get me wrong <laughs> like <laughs> he did it for like a couple of weeks or something like that I, f I feel like she would get the point but four months is is a little excessive but at the same time i'm almost like this is too funny to make you the asshole like, he brought it up, and she was like, don't worry about it. And then she kept doing it. And then he said, okay, you know, let's embody the lifestyle that you're pretending to have. I think I don't think he's necessarily done any. Could he have done something that would have made both his and his girlfriend's life easier? Yeah. Like, they are in on a house together. Like, they split the down payment, and yet he's rolling the dice. Don't get me wrong, but I don't think he necessarily did anything particularly wrong. It's kind of like a, like an everybody sucks here, but also I think he's right because he's hilarious. I, it, oh, man, when you got the bill, I actually, I'm the trophy boyfriend, so I don't pay for things. Oh, man. You want the wheat thins? Go get them. I'm not even looking at the comments. I don't want it to shatter my worldview. Because the real, the top answer should be like, you should have a talk. That's true. But this is really, I, I just want to end it like there for this story. Because in my head, that's what they're going to be like for the next 40 years. And that's like more interesting to me than them solving the problem. Maybe one more good one. Come on. One more good one. One more good one. Am I the asshole for invading my daughter's privacy and mocking her? Am I the asshole for saying, you must be feeling pretty dumb right now to my mom? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. I got a job last August, and one of the things my mom said to me that is if my grades slipped, she'd make me quit. What? Age. How how old are you? This is so important. You got to be like 15, right? She parroted this throughout the entire year, despite the fact that my grades never really dipped at any point. Anyway, finals came and actually managed to score an A- minus average instead of my usual B- plus average. Naturally, I was pretty proud of myself for that. So in a conversation, I went, looks like my grade hasn't dipped this year. You must be feeling pretty dumb right now. That is hilarious. You wanted to see me do bad in school and then be forced to quit my job, mom. You don't have my best interests in mind. This is how the mind of a teenager actually works. It's how my mind worked when I was at that age. God, my mom wants me to eat dinner that she cooked for me after she came home from a long day of work. Uh, anyway, sorry. You get over it at a point, I think, unless you're that 34-year-old guy who hates meal planning. Initially, since this was something I said in a clear joking matter, but she ended up not saying anything, so I was like, sorry. Then she got really mad at me and said I called her dumb, so I told... Her, she misunderstood my joke, but as usual, she refused to listen to me. Oh, man. I heard her tell my sister, did you hear what your brother said? And he was trying to justify it. Now I know what he really thinks of me and your dad. And she said this as if I wasn't even there. So at this point, I was really angry because I know she's going to tell everyone about what I said and probably going to say that I specially called her dumb. My sister said I shouldn't have made that joke in the first place because she's my mom. And all I could think was she can say that I'm a stupid and irresponsible layabout straight to my 
Er, but as soon as I prove her wrong, I'm in the wrong for it. F off. But am I the asshole here to begin with? This is so good. This is great. Edit. So a bit of a harsh response, but honestly, taking what's been said here to heart, I was being an obnoxious little jerk. One thing that really resonated with me is I kind of assumed my mom thought I was stupid, which caused my misplaced resentment in the first place. As such, I decided to apologize immediately. She didn't anything at first, but then she went on the golden rule saying, treat others as you want to be treated. Anyway, she forgave me and seemed like she was in a much better mood. Thanks to everybody who participated. Character development. Yeah. Hey, Applause. Easy clap. At least, you know, there's a learning lesson in there. But like, I did, I, I don't know, I almost feel the need, it was probably like 5% of the chat, but I do feel the need to say like, I don't think his mom did anything wrong. Seems like he's a teenager who got a job, and then his mom, like, so he's in high school, and then his mom said, I'm gonna make you quit the job if your grades slip. It doesn't seem like she was saying, like, you're too stupid to, to have a job and be in high school at the same time. It was more like school is a higher priority, but you can hold the job as long as your grades don't, don't suffer as a result. That just seems like good parenting, honestly. Seems like a normal situation. I don't know why he would have... I mean, because the teenage brain is like, you know, it's still growing. <laughs> You think everybody's out to get you. You thought I would you thought that the child that you put all your effort into raising over like the last 17 years is dumb. You want to see me fail for absolutely no reason that makes any coherent sense whatsoever, but I showed you by getting an A minus average. Anyway, he's just a teenager. It's okay. I mean, if he's 30, it's like, you know, it's a different story. Bet you feel dumb right now. Oh, man, I could never, though. <laughs> I always think that my mom's in my corner. I would never take a success of mine and be like, oh, man, I can't even, like, just thinking of it in my head gives me chills. Bet you feel pretty dumb right now. I would probably laugh as the parent, but I would not do it as a, as a child. That's crazy. Anyway, slash marker. React court. Feels good.